So connection, right? On Monday, I kind of talked about that. I talked about being together and doing things together. But connection, I feel like this word has such great meaning to us right now. And nowadays, we'd be completely lost if we didn't have um, internet, email, cell phones, uh, FaceTiming, and face, Facebook Live, right? Um, and it makes you think like how back in the day people would survive if they didn't have telegrams or letters. In the context of yoga, the word connection, which in Sanskrit is yursh, um, has real significance too. Now for me personally, as a yogi and as a yoga instructor, I really value connection when it comes to my life, my work, my practice, because it brings it real depth and meaning. And I've realized that to be able to facilitate connection on the mat through body, through mind, and through breath, it, it gives you tools to find greater connections when you're off your mat with friends like yourself, right? family, strangers even, and, and our environments. Now, we're all connected by prana, vital life force that's within us and around us. And prana is also referred to as energy. And I'm sure you, you're always, you've been affected by people, right? Yeah, some people will give you joy and, and you'll feel uplifted. And some people maybe bring you down or you feel depleted, right? And that just are, are ways that we show that we are connected energetically. This, in fact, us for us coming together, you know, with this love of yoga and albeit it's virtually, just think how powerful this impact is to come together and connect of our global community to practice in positive ways and to really uplift our prana. I truly, truly believe that if we are connected in our way, in our life, that, um, that gives us more way to be more loving, more kind, right, and happier, and of course, healthy. So with that, let's start our practice. We'll sit, comfort sit comfortably, um, crossed at the legs, on your shins, on your prop of choice that you've brought to your space if you'd like, and then go ahead and just let your hands rest right on your thighs. And close your eyes down. So just feel here that you're t nice and tall within your spine grounded firmly against your mat. Maybe you've had the opportunity to go outside for a bit. And you'll notice that once you stepped outside, maybe just the, the coldness against your skin, the cold air, or maybe the sun against your face. So if you think about the connection with nature, you want to find that same connection within your own breath. And just feel how a deep breath really invigorates your, your body, soothes your mind. Whenever you feel ready, you'll start to really increase the volume, the capacity of your breath, but so it feels more expansive. Practice ujjayi pranayama if you choose by constricting the very back of your throat. Then together, take a deep inhalation through your nose. Long, deep exhale out through your nose. With your next inhale, turn your chin over towards your right shoulder. And as you exhale, turn your chin to center. With an inhale, turn your chin all the way over towards the left. As you exhale, turn it back to center. Inhale, lift your head up and back. Exhale, take the chin center. 
Inhale, lower your chin towards your chest. Exhale, bring the head center. And you'll continue on your own, inhaling each time you turn the head. Your exhale is when you turn the chin center. What we're practicing here is called Brahma Mudra. Obviously, it's creating some movement within our neck, but it's very calming to our bodies, to our minds. And in fact, each time we move within these four directions, it mimics the four sounds within the sound of Om. So if you like, this next round, we'll inhale to the right. <clears throat> As you exhale, say out louder to yourself. Ah. Inhale to the left. As you exhale, ooh. Inhale, lift the head up and back. As you exhale, inhale, lowering the head. Exhale, mmm. Ah, ooh, e, mmm. Feel free to add that if you'd like. Otherwise, just continue to move without sound. Om itself is universal, the universal sound of connection. When your head is centered after that full round, pause here. Bring your hands together right at your heart. Create your sankalpa, your intention, your guidance for your practice this morning. Whatever will connect you with body, mind, spirit. We'll seal this intention with the sound of Om. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Go ahead and blink your eyes open. Lower the arms alongside your body and then circle them overhead as you inhale. With an exhale, we'll side stretch. So lower your right hand down, reach your left arm right alongside your ear. Spider crawl your right fingertips out so you can soften at your elbow, drawing the right shoulder down and away from your right ear. But then firmly root down against your left sit bone as you exaggerate this nice opening into your right side waist. Taking your top hand, reach it overhead so your fingertips will touch the right side of your head or the top of your ear. And as you inhale, we'll come up through center and straighten out. With an exhale, lower your left ear to your left shoulder. Notice here your hand's gonna wanna force down against your head. So rather than doing that, I'd like you to press the head up against your palm to feel the side stretch in the side of your neck. Now slide your hand behind your head, so your hand and your palm just cups the very back of the skull, and we'll drop the chin in and downward towards the left armpit. You can take your fingertip and your thumb right at the very base of the skull to help lift it further away from the tops of the shoulders to increase the stretch in the back of your neck. Then press the back of the head into your hand to lift it to center. Inhale, exhale, lower that arm down. Inhale, once again, arms reach overhead. This time, side stretch to your left. So lower that left hand down. Walk the fingertips out as much as you can. So you can lower the elbow, softening it to draw the shoulder away from your ear. Feel the right sit bone ground further as you expand and lengthen into your right side waist. Then we'll take that top arm again, wrap it overhead. Fingertips will touch the side of your head as you come to center. Lower your right ear now to your right shoulder. Again, try not to force the hand down against the head. Press the head up against your palm. You'll still feel that stretch. And then now slide that hand right behind your head. Cup the skull as you now tip the chin in and downward towards your armpit. Again, you can walk your fingertip and the thumb right at their very base of the skull. You'll find that ridge there. And then let it lift up and further away from your upper back. Go ahead now, press the head back into your palm, we'll bring it back to center. Then exhale, let's release that. If you're crossed at your legs, switch up the cross, just moving into that other hip. 
We'll reach the arms up to the sides, but then place your fingertips behind your head so the elbows are wide. As you exhale, pull the elbows towards each other, drop the chin to your chest, and they'll curl and round your spine just like a cat tilt. And as you inhale, cow tilt the spine and open the elbows wide. Let the head fall back against your fingertips. Then with the breath, as you exhale, we'll curl inward. Inhale, let's open it up. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, open. And curl in, exhale. Inhale, open the arms out wide to the side. And then go ahead and close the palms. Let them connect and slide the thumbs to the heart. Back in prayer. We'll meet on our hands and knees, tabletop position. <clears throat> So as you sit yourself up into tabletop and see that your shoulders are over your wrist creases, fingers really wide, knees underneath the hips at hip width, and just cat-cow here. So starting with your inhalation, let your belly sink, your tailbone lift, the heart push forward. And as you exhale, round your spine as your chin moves closer towards the chest, hollowing space into the belly and the tuck, tuck tail, inhaling back for your cow, and then exhaling to round. So just add a couple more here. Again, know that you can move a little bit more organically in your body if you want to add a few sways within the hips, through rolls through the shoulders, or movement through your head and your neck. Let's pause and neutral on this next one and then reach your right arm out wide to the side. As you exhale, we'll thread the right arm through, but rather than doing what we, you usually do, I want you to tuck your chin outside of your right bicep as you walk your left arm forward. So just notice here, your forehead should be towards the mat if not touching. All right, I'm gonna back off just so that I'm, you can hear me a little bit more. So as you're here, I want you to feel that you're a bit more squared within your shoulders rather than opening your chest to the left for a twist. Keep your hips still stacked over both knees and really push the tops of both feet firmly down against the mat as you find a bit more balance within your pelvis. Stay for another breath. Then use your inhale to look forward. Let's unravel the right arm forward to meet that left arm and go straight into a puppy pose on a hatasana. So maybe your forehead, the nose, the chin. Some of you, if you're pretty open, you'll let the chest melt down, but try not to force here. Think about how you can stay strong in your core so it's easy on your low back by snapping your navel center in and up. Nice. Let's walk our hands back onto the mat underneath the shoulders and right away round your spine into that cat's pose to counter out that movement in the spine. Inhale for neutral. Now reach your left arm out to the side. Exhale, throw that left arm through. And as it threads through, tuck your chin over your left bicep. Walk your right arm forward to the front of your mat. Once again, you want to feel here that you're a bit more squared and through your torso, from the shoulders to your pelvis. Right, so <clears throat> feel the tops of both feet firmly root down against the mat, almost like you're trying to get the shins to touch. Stay for an extra breath. Inhale, lift the head, unravel the arm as you exhale. Puppy pose, once start to melt the forehead, nose, the chin, the chest to the ground. Go ahead and inhale, slide your hands underneath the shoulders. Exhale, we cat pose the spine, rounding out, tucking through our tailbone. And then inhale to neutral, walking each hand forward, just half a handprint. I like this cue because it makes sure that we have a, a, our, our down dog's not too short. So go ahead and now find your downward facing dog and then move those legs now. Pedal a few times. Maybe even come to the top of your feet. Roll around at your ankle. Then on your next inhale, let's lift the right leg back on up. Bend at your knee and stack your right hip on top of your left. And then continue that movement through your ankle. Hinge at your knee or even twirl around into your hip socket. Even make those circles in the other direction. I can explore. 
Then as you inhale, straighten through that leg. Let's square the hips off. As you exhale, we'll hug the knee to the chest to step the foot forward to the top and then lower the back knee to the ground. Go ahead and now slide that front leg straight for a half split. Walk your hands back, tent the fingertips or if you brought your props with you, again, great place to place your hands on the props to bring the floor closer. But once you're here, flex to the foot, maybe roll to your inner ankle, outer ankle. Just getting, just kind of see what's going on into our body. A lot of us, um, hopefully, we've been getting out and moving in these past few days. Um, but if you've been stagnant, you really want to bring some blood flow in. So from here, let's simply pause. And now let's get a stretch into our IT bands. So we're going to walk our hands all the way over to the right. And then pick up your back foot, swing it off the mat. That's going to kind of ease the back knee so it's less torqued. And then come to the outer edge of your right heel. And as the outer edge of that heel is pushing down against the mat, so you can actually try to work to drag the leg back just to increase the stretch through your IT band, your outer hip, your outer glutes. Beautiful, guys. Take it back to center. Let's now lunge into the front knee. Keep the back knee down, and that left hand will stay down as we now inhale to reach the right arm up. And then open the chest a bit further so you can start to find your hand behind you. Then turn the thumb down and we'll bring the arm behind the back to create a bind. Once you're bound, now lower the left ear to your left shoulder. Really feel heavy through the head as you open up into the front of the right shoulder and the right side of that neck. Then take the gaze down to the mat. Swing your right arm forward and up and down to the ground as we now pick up the back knee and travel all the way over to our left leg for Skandasana transverse. Pivot onto the heel of your front foot. Some of you might be able to have the foot flat. Some of us might actually have the heel high. But regardless of what's going on in this leg, maybe try reaching both arms out on a diagonal as you get a little heavier into your hips. You'll feel a stretch that moves into the inner leg line, the inner hamstrings of the right leg. Keep their breath deep. Use your next exhale to walk your hands in. Inhale, lift your hips to center. As you exhale, we'll walk forward, turn the right foot forward, and step to the top, feet separated, sit bones distance. Go ahead and reach for opposite elbows as you're here. Create a little box around your head. Feel heavy through your torso. Feel heavy through your arms. Then as you release your arms, we're going to place our hands to our calves. And spread your fingers wide so you can really grip the calf muscles. Then once you're here, I want you to pull the calf mus muscles up towards the very back of your knees as your heels stay grounded and your sit bones lift. And then with your next exhale, so you can fold into this, still lifting the calves up, heels grounded, sit bones lifting. Just notice how you feel in the back chain of your legs. Then keep the hands where they are, just like monkey. Inhale so you can straighten out and lengthen. Pull your low belly in. Keep the knees bent if you need to. And exhale, pull up on the, the calves as you fold back in. Try that once again. Inhale, hold your calves, lift and lengthen. Fold back in, lifting the calves to the sit bones, staying rooted through your heels. Release the calves and now inhale, come up to stand, reach both arms overhead. Your right hand will catch hold of your left wrist and will exhale up and over towards your right. Inhale through the center, switch the grip, exhale to the left. Inhale through the center. This time, go out and cactus out your arms. Slide the shoulder blades towards each other. The bottom tips of the blades move forward to the chest as you open up a little bit more. Straighten through the spine as the arms reach overhead. Inhale. Exhale, fold forward down into your legs. Inhale, monkey pose. This time, hands to the shins as you lift and lengthen. Let your collarbones widen. Exhale, fold in, and then step back and find plank downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, again, if you need to continue to move the legs, move the legs. Eventually, we'll all lift the left leg back and up. Come into your three-legged dog. Bend at that knee. Stack the hip once again. Again, move around from the toes, the ankle, the knee, the hip. Circle it around. Find some space. Get the kinks out of the way. Go ahead now and straighten through the legs. Square the hips out. 
Exhale, step that foot forward to the very top as we lower the back knee to the ground. Start with your half splits. So again, you'll come onto the heel of the front foot. Place your hands on blocks. Stent the fingers if you need to. Maybe roll again to the inner heel, the outer heel, or simply maybe fold to that leg. And you are, again, at home. You get to just play around as much as you like. With your next inhale, let's lift the, and lengthen our chest as we walk the hands to the left this time. Again, take your back foot and slide it off your mat. It's just a way so we're not twisting at that back knee. But this front foot, you want to come to the heel. And then push the heel down against the mat and try to feel like you're dragging the leg back. And you'll definitely feel that outer band in that left leg. Inhale through the center. Exhale, go ahead and lunge forward into the knee. Right hand will stay to the mat. Reach your left arm up as you inhale, and then really exaggerate this opening like you're trying to find your hand behind you. We'll turn the thumb down, and then bring your arm behind the back for that bind. But once you're bound, we're going to lower the right ear to the right shoulder. Again, you just kind of start to feel just a little stretch that runs through the side of the neck, the front of that left shoulder. Go ahead now and take your gaze down. Swing your left arm forward, up and around to place inside the left foot. Pick up your back knee as we travel all the way over to the right for your transverse lunge skandasana. Again, once you're set here, you can walk the arms out diagonally. Let the head simply drop as you feel heaviness to your hips. Just to feel the stretch into the inner hamstrings of your left leg. Let's inhale through center, exhale, travel back to the front. Inhale, step, step your right foot to meet your left foot, and exhale, we forward fold in. Hands to the shins this time, lift and lengthen. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale and fold. Once again, inhale. Exhale, fold. Come up to stand. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Reach up overhead. Left hand this time will reach for the wrist and exhale over to the left. Inhale, center. Switch the grip. Exhale, right. Inhale through the center. Exhale, cactus out the arms. Glide the blades towards the midline. Press the bottom tips of the blades forward. Inhale, extend both arms overhead. Exhale, let's fold forward back into our legs. Inhale, lift up halfway for monkey. As you exhale, go ahead and step back to downward facing dog. Inhale this time, let's come forward to plank. Knees, chest, chin, lower all the way to the ground. Once you're there, release your legs out from underneath you and then bring the forearms out in front of you as we now lower the right ear to the right shoulder. Press down against your left elbow. Inhale, take the head center. Exhale, lower the left ear to the left shoulder as you press down against your right elbow. You'll feel a stretch in the neck. Come through center, inhale. Exhale, lower the ribs, the chest, the chin. As the hands slide back right by your low ribs. And then once you're here, lift and hover the hands. Keep your forehead just hovering over your mat just a couple inches or so. So the crown of the head is head bumping forward. From here, keep the hands hovering, but then so you can start to slide the hands back behind you, straighten through the arms as the palms turn upward. Then bring them back where they were so you can do this without having the fingers touch your mat. Again, inhale, press those arms back. Exhale, bring them forward. Again, inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale. This time, hold, reach around, interlace your fingers. Next, inhalation, extend the arms straighter and longer, and then fly the legs along with you as you lift the chest a little higher. Gaze towards the floor in front of you rather than directly forward, so you can keep all four sides of the neck nice and open. Use the exhale to slowly lower. Place your hands right by your low ribs. This time, either cobra pose or upward facing dog. Press the tops of the feet. Let your knees, your thighs float off the ground. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your hips up and back. Take a walk forward to the very top of your mat for a standing forward fold. Feet separated, sit bones distance or closer if you'd like. Inhale, monkey pose. Get length. Fold. Exhale. Come to stand. Inhale, reach the arms overhead, Urdhva Hastasana. Then exhale, slide the hands downward to the heart. Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. 
Palms to the ground, walk, step, or hop back, and lower halfway Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, Upward Facing Dog. Exhale, Adho Mukha, Downward Facing Dog. Spread your fingers really wide on your mat. Feel as if you're trying to push the mat down and forward as your hips are lifted. Once you do so, sometimes you'll feel the shoulder heads creep up towards your ear lows. So really work on taking the shoulder heads away from the ears as you wrap your shoulder blades around. I like to refer to this like you've got wings on your upper back and let your wings spread wide. Take one more breath in your dog. And then use an inhale, lift the heels, look forward. Exhale, walk, step, or hop forward to the top. Inhale, lengthen, fold inward, exhale. Press to stand, inhale, see the arms up overhead. Exhale, slide the hands downward to your heart. Samastitihi. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, let's fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen out. Palms flat, whether you walk, step, or hop back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha, Downward Facing Dog. Seeing your legs, set your feet, sit bones distance apart, heels hidden behind the toes. Heels can be lifted, perfectly fine for that. You can also bend the knees pretty generously if it's hard on the hamstrings, but think about your low belly pulling inward to continue the lengthening even for, through your whole spine. Take another breath. Then inhale, lift the heels, look forward. Exhale, walk, step, or hop forward to the top. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Fold right in. Uttanasana. Come to stand. Urdhva Hastasana. Reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hands downward to the heart space. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift up. Palms flat, feet back, Chaturanga Dandasana. So you'll continue on your own. In fact, if you want to move slower, if you want to move faster, go ahead. I'll move at my pace. You can follow my pace or not. <clears throat> After Monday, I realized just how challenging it is to practice and talk at the same time. So my breath is not quite matched like your breath would be when you're not speaking. So you'll just have to bear with me. You'll see me kind of modify a lot just so I can cue you better. If you're with me in down dog, let's now inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, walk, step, or hop to the top. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your arms, lift the gaze, see your palms connect, and then we'll slide it down to the heart, Sama Sitihi. I'm going to do one more, so wherever you are, inhale, arms up, exhale, fold. Inhale, lift up halfway, palms to the ground, walk, step, or hop, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, exhale, Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. From here, in your downward dog, <clears throat> go ahead and look forward, we're going to lower our forearms down down to the mat, and then slide your thumbs closer so they touch. So you see that your elbows are shoulder distance if you don't want any wider than that. Then take your feet about as wide as your mat. You can always walk them in a little closer if you'd like to. Right. Once you're here, think about really pressing down against your elbows, your forearms, and your palms. Again, feel the thumb tips touching each other. Nice. Now from here, keep your palms flat. Lift both elbows up. Left hand will stay down. Reach your right arm through to reach the outside of your left leg. So it might be the thigh, the calf, maybe down to the ankle. And then start to bend your right elbow to turn and twist. Like you're trying to rotate and look underneath your left armpit. You can always bend your right knee if you'd like. That might help. Unravel that. Place your right hand to meet the left hand. Again, thumb tips touch. Throw that left arm through to reach for the outside of your right leg, the thigh, the calf, the ankle. Bend up the left elbow. Start to work your chest underneath your right arm. Left knee can bend if you'd like. And then release that. Bring both hands to the mat. Separate them where they were at shoulder distance. Bring your feet back on your mat. And let's do a down dog check by sliding forward into plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale, lift the heels, look to your hands. Exhale, walk, step, or hop to the hands. Inhale, lift up halfway. 
exhale, let's fold. Chair pose, Ukatasana, sink low into your hips, reach your arms up overhead. Now, you can always separate the feet, more sit bones distance to give you space for your lower back. Otherwise, traditionally, we'll bring the big toes to meet with some space in between the heels. Once you're set in your seat, slide the knees back so you feel like your knees are directly stacked over both heels. And then from here, look upward as we connect the palms like prayer. Bend at your elbows now as we tuck the heel of the hands at the very base of the skull. Point your elbows up as you wrap your triceps in. Now you're gonna create this cat tilt within your spine, but I want you to keep your belly strong so it helps support your low back. Feel the lengthening you're creating from the point of your elbows to your waistline. Take another breath. Press to stand, inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, fold forward into your legs. Inhale, look up halfway. Exhale, step your right foot back and we'll lower the right knee down. Anjana Yasana, low lunge, lift your arms up overhead. <clears throat> So this first one here, we're holding this. Feel free to sink down and forward into your pelvis, but I want you to think the action of your legs. Stamp the front heel down, and then feel like you're trying to isometrically drag the heel to touch your back knee, and the same goes for the back leg. The knee's trying to drag forward. You'll notice that scissoring action brings integrity and strength to your legs. Then the final part of this, hug your outer hips and outer thighs inward. Arms are overhead as you lengthen away from the pelvis. Now shift your upper body back so the upper body and pelvis is stacked more over your back knee. Bend your right elbow above your head. Left hand will grab that elbow and then side stretch to your left. With your inhale, bring both arms overhead. Exhale, lower the hands, frame your left foot. Step back nice and clean to a plank pose. Inhale, exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward face. Exhale, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha. Inhale, let's lift the right leg in the air. Keep your hips square. Tuck your knee into your chest and round. Exhale. Inhale, reach your leg back. Exhale, step the foot forward to the top. Gently lower the back knee, low lunge for this side. Inhale, lift the chest overhead, or chest in your arms. Once again, think about your action in your legs. Hug inward to the midline, right heel to the left knee, left knee forward to the heel, outer hips hugging in. Let your upper body extend and lengthen from the pelvis as you lift your gaze. Then shift your upper body and pelvis back. Bend just your left elbow. Right hand will grab the elbow as we now side stretch over to your right. Inhale through the center. Extend the arms up. Lower the hands as you exhale. This time step forward to the top with your inhale. Fold down. Exhale. Feet together or not. Bend the knees. Inhale. Ukatasana. Reach the arms. Connect the palms. Exhale, bend your elbows, tuck the heel of the hands very right behind the head. Squeeze the upper arms closer towards your ears. Keep the core strong. Press to stand on your next inhale. Dive forward, exhale. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, step your left foot back. Lower the knee to the ground. Once again, it's low lunge. Reach those arms up overhead. This time, bring both arms slightly forward so you can see your hands. Cross your right wrist over your left wrist. Then turn your hands so now you can interlace your fingers. Start to create a little bend at your elbows so you can draw your arms back. Biceps maybe line more with your ears. Shoulders are wrapping around. Shoulder blades are wrapping around towards your chest, but the tops of the shoulders are away from your ears. Then add a side stretch to this too. Bring your arms over to the right. Come to center, inhale, release with your exhale. Inhale, nice and clean to plank. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, up dog. Exhale, Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. Let's lift the left leg with your inhale. Exhale, hug your knee to the chest, your shoulders come over your wrists. Inhale, reach your leg. Exhale, step the foot forward to the top, gently lowering that back knee. Back to Anjane, inhale, low lunge, reach those arms, lift the gaze. Take the hands slightly forward in front of you. We'll cross the left wrist over the right wrist this time. Again, as you turn your hands, let's interlace our fingers. A little bend at your elbows will help bring the arm bones back. Maybe the line with your biceps, maybe even further for some of you who are a little bit more mobile in your shoulders. But once you're here, again, think about how you've got clearance to the very back of your neck as you now add a side stretch to your left. 
Inhale, we'll come back to center. Release that as you exhale, hands to the mat. Step forward on your inhale. Fold forward with your exhale. Bend your knees. Inhale, Ukatasana. Exhale, straighten the legs and lower the arms right alongside your body. Inhale, reach those arms. Dive forward as you exhale. Inhale, lift up halfway. Palms flat, feet back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward face. Exhale, downward facing dog. Go ahead and take a few breaths here. If you need to lower your knees, towel off, take a drink, do so. I know I do. I got this beautiful fire going because I was cold earlier. Now I feel like I'm sweating balls, but <laughs> this is good. Getting my body warm. So whenever you're ready, we're going to come back <clears throat> and meet back into a downward facing dog. All right, let's continue our movement. So inhale, lift your right leg up in the air. And as you exhale, hug your knee right into your chest again. Round it out. Inhale, reach your leg back. This time I'd like you to bend at your knee, stack your hip, but then stay static. Really work on keeping your, sh your upper back, your shoulders square to the mat. Now keep the legs as is, but look forward. This is an option. Maybe you can lower the left forearm down. You'll naturally have to micro bend your right elbow to make this action happen. But think about your right knee lifting as you're pressing down against your left elbow and forearm. Beautiful, guys. Come back to three leg dogs. Straighten the arms, straighten the leg. Inhale. Exhale, step the foot forward to the top. Stay in the ball of the back foot. Train track your stance. And then inhale, come on up. High lunge. Once you're set in the lunge, use your breath, next breath in to straighten your front knee out. Keep the knee soft as you pull up on the quads. Notice here the tendency is to stick the butt out and exaggerate this cat tilt. So pull your low belly in and up and then hug your front ribs in so you're really contained within the core. As you exhale now, we'll bend the knee at the same time our hands will come behind the head and then you'll add a twist to your right. Inhale to center, reach the arms, straighten the leg, keep the core strong. Exhale, three movements, bend, hands behind and twist to the right, same side. Inhale up, same side as the twist, exhale to the right. One more, inhale, exhale, twist right. Now hold this, keep your torso stacked over your pelvis. Inhale, reach the arms out wide. Exhale, warrior two, other side. Check your stance, heel to arch, heel to heel, whatever serves your low back best. So you can keep the knee directly over the heel as the heels isometrically squeeze inward and then inward energy, energy to draw that prana upward, right? Udana, that vayu, udana, that lifting up. Take another breath. On your inhale, straighten the leg. Let's reverse our triangle pose. So reach the arm up and alongside your ear. Rebend the knee as you exhale, and then eagle your right arm over your left. If you're tight in your shoulders, reach around, grab your shoulder blades, otherwise a full wrap within the arms. Take your eagle arms now, and then slide them to the left as you look over your right shoulder. You'll feel a deep stretch that runs into your right deltoid, this belly of the arm. See if you can even lift the elbows more in line with the throat. And obviously, the more you bring them to the left, the more you'll feel in that stretch. Take another breath here. Unravel the arms, straighten the leg again. Inhale, exhale, we'll take it down to the mat, framing your right leg. Step back to plank, maybe a one-legged plank, vinyasa through if you like, or go straight into a downward facing dog. All right, left side, inhale, lift the left leg up. Exhale, hug your knee into the chest, we'll curl and round. Inhale, reach your leg long. Exhale, bend your knees, stack the hips, not the shoulders. Keep them square. Look forward, and then so you can lower your right forearm down. Soften the left elbow naturally. Notice you might dump a lot of weight to your right, so you can find a little bit more squaring in your torso. Left knee higher, away from your right elbow. Let's straighten it out. And on, you in, on your inhale, right leg, left leg, sorry, right arm. Exhale, step that foot forward to the top. Go ahead and come on up, high lunge. 
setting your stance, again, making sure that we, each foot has a lane for a bit more balance that corresponds with the hip points. Once you're set, we'll straighten the front knee out. Again, think about less locking of the knee. All right? You don't want to get into the joints. Think about engaging through your quads. And then, again, pull your low belly in and up. Knit your front ribs in. As you exhale, we'll bend the knee, hands behind the head, and turn and twist to your left. Inhale, center, straighten the leg and the arms. Your long exhale, bend the knee, hands behind, and twist left. Inhale. Exhale, and we twist. One more. This time we hold, rotate, and open up. Next breath in, expand the arms. Exhale, warrior two, other side. Once you set your feet, your stance, ground the heels, squeeze to the midline. Keep your upper body stacked directly over the pelvis. Flip the front palm, reverse the triangle, straighten out and lean back. Exhale, come back for warrior two as you bend into your knee. Wrap your left arm over your right arm. Eagle wrap the arms or reach for your shoulder blades. Once you're set, slide both arms to the right. Look over your left shoulder. Stay strong and maintained in your foundation, your legs. Take another deep breath. Beautiful. Unravel. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Let's reverse. Exhale, take it down to the mat. We'll frame the front leg. Step back, plank, one-legged plank. Once again, your option to vinyasa, your option to skip it all the way. And then we'll meet back, downward facing up. All right, guys. Let's inhale, slide it forward to a plank. As you exhale, lower the knees, lower your hips, lower your chest, come all the way down. Now, <clears throat> grab your block or whatever you're using for a block at home and bring it right in front of you. All right, so what we'll do here is you hold the edges of the block or your prop of choice, but free up your fingertips. So you don't want to feel like you're grabbing the block like so. I want you to hold the block with your palms. Then so you can straighten your arms as much as you can. So for me, I need to create a little micro bend in my elbows just to ease my right bicep. So once I'm set, or you're set rather, go ahead and lower the forehead down to the mat. I'm going to keep my head lifted just so you can hear me. So forehead down, we're holding the block in front of us with our palms. On an inhale, lift just your arms in the block. Everything's down to the ground, the tops of the feet, your forehead. But so you can lift that block. Maybe though your biceps will line with your ears, maybe not. Again, palm the block rather than using your fingers. It's a different sense of energy if you use your hands or rather your fingertips. So now lower the block back down. Let it go. How was that? Let's try it again. Inhale, lift just the arms in the block, not the head. Keep everything grounded, tops of the feet rooted, forehead to the mat, arms lifting. Push the block into the midline and then lower. All right, let's do it one more time. Inhale, lift. And then exhale, lower. All right, take your block or your prop, place it at your lower back or on top of the glutes and then reach both arms back same thing you're going to want to grip with your fingers so instead so you can palm that block free up the fingers bend at your elbows if you need to but keep the heads of the shoulders inner shoulders rolling out so the collarbones are wide okay once you're set again forehead top of the feet stay touching inhale lift the block off your seat without using your hands hold 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 Oh boy. And then lower that block down. All right. Good thing I like things in threes and not three million. All right. Two more. Hold the block, palm it. Inhale, lift the block off your seat. Again, keep everything grounded. Squeeze the block with just your palms, not your fingers. Lower the block back down. All right. Last one. Inhale. Ah, exhale. Beautiful. Set the block to the side child's pose. Send your hips back to your heels. Give your arms a break by wrapping them outside of your legs. Lower the forehead down to the ground.
All right, yogis. Let's continue. Come into your downward facing dog. Come to plank. Lift the hips up and back. All right. Actually, hang on a second. <clears throat> this next part here, we're, we're going to play. And I'm going to give you options to play with me or not. But it will enter it pretty similarly to what we've been doing thus far. So with your next inhale, lift your right leg back and up. Hug your knee to the chest as you exhale. Once again, inhale, lift that leg back. Bend your knees, stack the hips, keep the shoulders square. Look forward, lower just your left forearm down. This is where we add on your right hand, slide it back. So you can line the hand more in line with that left elbow. Option one. Take your right knee to your right tricep, look forward, hold. Boy, that's intense. Skip it if you're like, yeah, no way, Jenny, I don't think so. Those of you who have more kind of advanced practice, you can fly this. Take your right knee and shin to the top of your right arm, look forward, maybe float the back leg. Nice. Down dog. Set your hands, set the legs, reach that right leg up again. Step it forward. High lunge. Inhale. Come on up. Whew. All right. Same thing as before. Inhale. Straighten the front knee. Pull the low ribs, the front ribs in and up. Exhale. Bend the knee. Take the hands behind the head. Twist. This time we're holding this one. We're keeping the arms the same. But then start to inhale. Lengthen forward. Exhale. Turn and twist without your hands. Again, inhale, lengthen from the pelvis, exhale, and turn and twist. You'll notice here, a lot more challenging to rotate without the use of our arms as anchors against that right leg. See if you can try one more time. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, rotate. Beautiful, inhale up, warrior two, exhale. Setting the stance once again. Reverse it, inhale, straighten the front leg, hold right here this time. This time we're gonna bend the top elbow, left hand to the elbow. Otherwise, full Gomukhasana, take your left arm to the side, turn the thumb down to find internal rotation at the shoulder first, then reach back. Maybe you'll find your shirt, maybe you'll find your fingers to create that interlock. Once you're set, start to move into this unsupported version of a triangle pose. So start to extend and lengthen, let that right elbow lead you, Feel your head press back against your arm bones. Notice your front knee wants to lock out, so keep the knee fairly soft here as you really work on engaging your quadriceps. Hold the unsupported version, one more breath. Then as you release, lower the right hand to the shin, to the mat, to your block. Reach that left arm up on an inhale. Exhale, extend the arm alongside your ear. Beautiful, take a few moments here. We're touching the ground with your feet, maybe your hand to a block or to a mat. So feel grounded in your body as you now reconnect back with the depth of your breath. From here, go ahead and sweep your left hand down towards your right foot and we'll travel all the way to the left. Revisit that skandhasana transverse lunge. Once you're set here, thread your left arm in front of your left shin, reach your right arm up, pause here if you'd like. If you want to create a bind here, turn your thumb down, reach around, bind around your left shin as you clasp your hands right by your left hip. One more deep breath. Unravel that, use an inhale, come up through center, travel to the front as you exhale, turning the right foot forward. Let's move right into our half moon pose. So shift your weight to your standing leg, lift the back leg. Notice here, we wanna always hyperextend the standing knees. So keep a soft bend in the knee and then really work on the quads and your glutes to create stability at your hips. The same thing goes for this lifted leg. If you let it be lazy, it's gonna get heavy. So bring energy into it, flex the foot, so the toes are pointing out in the same direction as your chest. And then you want to engage the glutes in the top leg as well to find stability in that standing leg. When you feel good and ready, maybe express it by reaching the left arm to the sky. You can always reach around and maybe grab a hold of that foot, half bow, chapasana. If you got the foot, let it go gently as you inhale. 
Gaze downward to the mat. Close the hips with an exhale and step your left foot to meet your right foot at the very top of your space. Bring the feet together to touch. Lift the toes. Drop the bum down and then open your knees out wide to the sides. Once you're set here, go ahead and spider call your arms forward and let your head fall. Just breathe. Options here, hang out here, taking this purposeful pause. Otherwise, if you want to, you can slide your hands to the mat and practice Bakasana. Shins up against the upper arms, look forward, round the spine, hollow out space in the belly as you float the feet off the mat. If you're balancing here, maybe you're moving to a tripod headstand, maybe you're adding something fancy, maybe you're still on your toes and your head is dropped, but no matter what, we'll now make our way down dog, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward up. Okay, good breather here, pause. All right, left side, folks. Let's lift the left leg back and up on your inhale. Knee to nose with your exhale. Three leg dog inhale, reach your leg up. As you exhale, bend the knee, stack the hip. Again, look forward, lower your right forearm to the mat, micro bend the left elbow, hold here, or slide the left hand back so it's in line with your right elbow, shift your weight forward, tap the knee to the tricep so you can hold that, or fly it. I'm not going to because on my right side, my right arm won't handle it, so do what you do. Inhale, extend the leg, come back to th three leg dog. Step the left foot forward with your exhale. Use your inhale, come on up, high lunge. Reach those arms up. Beautiful, inhale, straighten the front leg. Again, without lock at the knee, pull your low belly in. Hands come behind the head, exhale, twist to your left and hold this. With your next inhale, Link, lengthen forward diagonally a little bit so now you can turn your right chest to the left. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, out of the pose, warrior two, exhale. Reverse triangle, inhale, reach the arm up and back, bend at the elbow, reach for that elbow, half gomukhasana, or if you'd like full, take your arm to the side, thumb down, reach around, find your hand, find your shirt, create your bind, you choose, and then we'll move into this unsupported version of your triangle pose. So start to find that same lengthening away from your pelvis, leading from that left elbow, keeping the length on that left side waist. Then as you release, bring your left hand down, reach your right arm up and alongside the ear as you exhale. Again, think about here, it's a great way. We've now found grounding in our body from being completely unsupported in the upper half of the body. So connect back to your breath, your body, your mind, and really observe the particular shape you're in at this moment, expansive through our arms and our legs. Gaze downward, sweep your right hand down and through. As you exhale, we'll travel to the right. Bend just your right knee as you glide your left heel out. Thread your right arm in front of your right shin and reach that left arm up. Either stay right here or add a bind. Left arm will reach behind. Clasp your hands. Open up through the chest. Unravel that bind and we'll inhale, lift the hips to center. Use your next exhale to travel forward to the top as we now move straight into a half moon pose. Go ahead and shift and lift. Again, take a moment here. See that your left foot is facing forward, left knee still in line with the top of the foot. Again, rather than locking out your knee joints, think about engaging more into your quads, engage more within your glutes. Find stability at the points of our other joints, the hips. Bend the knee if you choose to, adding that bow shape in your body without hyperextending the standing knee. Hold here. Release as you inhale, gaze downward. Exhale, start to close the hips so that right foot can step to the top. Bring the feet to touch, come to the toes, drop the knees wide. Once again, extend the arms forward, drop your head. 
This time your option, if you want to fly into crow pose, go ahead. If you want to add to some this particular pose, I'll turn to face you. From here, if your arms are reaching, maybe take the arms out in front of the shins, much like what we did in Skandasana in that transverse. You can stay here. Otherwise, lift the hands, turn the thumbs down, maybe reach around. You might be able to hold your heels as you lower the crown of the head further down. Again, options. Some of you may need to stay here, some of you here. Maybe some of you are just like, I want forward fold. All right? Hold what you've got. And then we will eventually come out of this and come all the way to stand. So straighten out through the legs, reach both arms up overhead on an inhale, and then exhale, slide your hands to the heart. All right, lower the arms down. Pause for just a moment in your mountain pose, Tadasana, just again, really connecting deeply against our, the earth, really feeling connection within our body. And this will be just the last little final standing sequence of our practice this morning. So looking downward, I want you to just see that your <clears throat> right foot, toes are forward, right foot, right leg is underneath your right hip. We'll come into a tree pose here. Right leg is that standing leg. So left foot will come against the calf or reach for your ankle to place the foot against your inner thigh. Always avoid the inside of your knee. Then once you're set in tree, Squeeze your right inner thigh against the foot, the foot back against the thigh. You want to feel again this action of hugging in. Reach the arms up overhead when you feel good and ready. Palms face, shoulder blades wrap around towards the chest. Either stay here or lower the back of your left hand against your left thigh and use an exhale to side stretch over towards your right. Inhale, we'll reach the left arm up. Pivot the right knee forward. From here, option one, bring your right hand to the front of the knee or peace finger grip to reach for that left big toe. Extend the leg straight if you have the toe. And if you're doing that, notice the pelvis is going to want to come forward. So see if you can pull the belly in, pull that left femur bone back into the hip socket, recreate a neutral pelvis, recreate the natural curve at your lower back. Whether your knee is straight or you're holding the toe, or rather knee bent, or you're holding the toe, let's release that left arm up. Exhale, step the foot back, ground the foot flat. We're now in warrior one, Virabhadrasana A. Swing the arms behind you, interlace your fingers. Use your inhale to extend the arms, open up your chest, humble it, forward fold down. Ground that back foot as you lengthen away from the pelvis, aiming the crown of the head downward to the mat. Hug your right thigh into the midline. Stay rooted against your back foot. Let's lift up halfway as you inhale. Reach your left arm forward and let it guide you up to face the left. We'll turn our toes out, heels in, sit into a goddess squat. All right. Once you're here, <clears throat> create dhyana mudra in your hands. So thumbs touch the index fingers and place the back of the hands inside the inner knees. Lengthen your spine as you're here, as you sit heavy into your hips and your pelvis. Let's add kalabati breath. Quick inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale out of the nose. So begin here, inhale. Like you're turning your belly. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Another 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Deep inhale, straighten the legs, reach the arms up. Warrior two, face forward, exhale. Reverse warrior inhale, this time keeping the knee bent. Exhale, we'll place both hands down. Frame your right foot at the top. Step your left foot forward and a little off to the left. I'm going to walk my right foot a little to the right. So each foot has a lane. Left toes, point them towards the front left corner of your mat. Once you're set, inhale, lengthen forward. Now listen, rather than turning your chest to work your left rib cage to your right shin, notice it brings your upper body, your torso, and it um, away from the pelvis. So see, keep your spine in line with the pelvis as you just fold forward and down. All right? And you'll feel your right belly, your right rib cage closer to your right thigh bone. <clears throat> just in my studies, anatomically, it's much better for our spine rather than having to 
torque. So I know if you've got a Stongies out there, they might be mad at that cue, but you know, this is just something that works better for me. And in my classes, I feel it works better for most students. Take another breath. Go ahead and inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, step your left foot all the way back and scoot the toes back. We're gonna lower the knee down. Now walk your right foot over to the right. Let's come into this passive lizard pose. So you choose to either stay on your hands. You can take your prop of choice and lower the forearms down. Know that your prop might have different heights to it too, so you can always adjust that. And some of you might be able to just to go ahead and lower both forearms down to the mat. Once you're here, take a look at your right foot. <clears throat> Rather than rolling to the pinky side of your foot, where you might end up um, sickling at your ankle, think about keeping the sole of your foot completely flat, even as you let the knee open out wide to the side. <clears throat> and just take a few moments here, and letting your, your hips, your pelvis feel heavier to the mat. Again, option to stay as you are. If you'd like, you can prop back onto your forearm, or rather your hands, swing your right arm forward, up and around, <clears throat> and then grab your back foot for a quad stretch. <clears throat> you can kick that foot back against the hand, opening up a little bit more into your chest. Otherwise, if you'd like, you might want to try this. And you can, if you can work on pulling that heel in closer to your glute, go ahead and do that. It increases that stretch in your left quadriceps. But if you can manage it, lower the left forearm back down and then maybe start to lower the head closer to the mat. That's going to really increase that stretch into that left thigh. All right, without slingshotting that back foot, let it go. And then from here, go ahead and come back onto your hands again. We're going to toe heel the right foot over, straighten your right leg. Let's revisit half split to now see if you can work towards full split Hanumanasana. So if that's for you, slide the heel forward, your left knee back, heel forward, left knee back until you're eventually on the mat. Again, event, <clears throat> a lot of us uh, use a block that can anchor underneath your right thigh, especially if you're still working on this particular pose. I like to curl the back toes under. So once the toes are curled and I'm pushing my toes, I'm also working this left outer hip forward to actually recreate that squaring of my pelvis, right? So it's less a, a your cheerleader type split, splits and more into a yogi type split. Take one more breath. Beautiful. From here, you'll come back into your half split that will eventually move right into a standing version, standing split. So step onto your right foot, lift that left leg up. Once you're set here, lots of place, time to play. So if you want, you're working on your handstands at home. If you want to work on taking a hand to the ankle, feel free, right? Otherwise, you can always remain static and just keep the leg lifted. Let's see what I got today. Yeah, not so much. Eventually, though, we'll come to the top of the mat. Both feet come down. And then inhale, halfway lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, let's rise up to stand. Reach your arms. Exhale, slide your hands to the heart. All right. Again, reestablish the foundation. So see that your left leg is really underneath that left hip, right? And then we'll place, that, place the right foot into tree. Right foot to the calf. Grab the ankle, place it above that inner knee, anchor it against the inner thigh. Again, hug to the midline. Standing leg hugs to the right. Stay the foot against the leg squeezes to the left. Then let's reach our arms overhead when you feel stable. Then either stay or lower the back of your right hand to your right thigh. Reach your left arm right alongside your ear. Inhale through the center, pivot your right knee forward. Option one, place your right hand for the top of the knee. Option two, peace finger grip down to the toe. Extend that leg straight if you have the toe, and again, pull the right femur bone back in, draw the low belly in. Feel how you can create that neutral pelvis as you also recreate that natural curve at the low back. Then as you release the leg, reach both arms up overhead, inhale, Exhale, warrior one, Virabhadrasana A. Set the back foot flat, angle the toes slightly forward here. 
Then once you're set into your pose, really ground out. We'll take our hands right behind the back, interlace. Inhale, extend the arms, lift your chest, humble forward, exhale. Lengthen away from your pelvis as you melt downward. Let's think about your left hip. A lot of times our torso might be out diagonally. So see so you can turn the torso forward as you hug your left hip into the midline. Using your next inhale, come up halfway. Reach your right arm forward and let that arm lift you up and to your right, turning the toes out, heels in, back to your goddess pose. This time, keep your hands on your thighs and then drop your left shoulder towards your right foot. Inhale, center, right shoulder to the left foot. Then one more time each side, inhale up, exhale towards the back, inhale up and to the right. Inhale, rise to stand, sweep the arms up, straighten through your legs. Warrior two, face forward as you exhale. Flip up your palm, inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill the hands down to frame your left foot and then step your right foot forward and a little more to the right. Point your right foot so the toes are looking to the right corner of your mat. Once again, as you're here, inhale, lengthen as you pull your left hip back and then reach forward and down rather than on an angle, right? Think about that. Left rib cage, touching your left inner thigh. Let's inhale, look up and get length. Exhale, step your right foot all the way back. Let's find lizard. So scoot the toes back, walk your left foot over. Again, once you're set, you can stay on your hands. Come to your forearms, onto a block, maybe to the mat. <clears throat> Again, this is all I was talking about now that you can kind of see on this side. So a lot of us like to do this, which is, it's fine. But the tendency here is to really collapse against that ankle, and then it's not healthy for our ligaments in the ankle. So see if you, just for today, keep the foot flat, but you can still let the knee fall out to the right, or rather to your left. Again, just kind of observing that. <clears throat> Again, you can stay here if you'd like. If you want to add that stretch for your back leg, come back onto your forms, or rather your hands. Reach your left arm up and around, grab a hold of that right foot. You're going to open up through the chest, or for that deeper version, pull the heel in closer. You can stay here, maybe again lower the right forearm down, or even deeper, go ahead and start to lower the forehead closer to the mat. And let the leg go gently. Go ahead and toe heel your left foot over so you can frame it. And then we straighten it at the same time. Half split towards Hanumanasana, your full split. So as you ease yourself in, using your prop or not, you choose. And think about maybe those back toes curling, if that's a great tool to work your right sideways forward. And then you hear, you can always work on expressing it if you didn't last time, maybe just folding forward into it. All right, back towards half split, so ease into it. Your transitions are so important. Step to that left foot, standing split now, find your balance. Once again, as you're here, you can just hang out, let the head get heavy. Maybe you find your balance just on that left foot, or you'll ground your palms, maybe working on some handstand hops. I know some of you contacted me after last class and were telling me how fun it was to kind of practice with your family, you know, handstanding or with your dogs. Eventually, both feet land back to the top. Inhale, look up, lengthen. Fold right in, exhale, step your feet back, go to downward facing dog. If you want to add one final vinyasa, add it right here. Then inhale, we'll come forward to plank, exhale, lower all the way downward to your mat. All right, once you're here, we'll create what's called crocodile pose. Simple, bring your forearms out in front of you, cross that other forearm on top, rest your forehead on top of the top arm. All right, but we're going to make this a little active here. So keeping your arms in this genie-like shape, 
keep the forehead touching the arm bones. Use your next inhale to lift the arms up, the head, the chest, and then lower. So you can keep the tops of the feet grounded. And legs are active, so kneecaps are lifted off the mat. All right? And then really reach out through your toes, like you want to get a little longer than the legs. Again, keep the arms the same. Inhale, let's lift up. Exhale, lower. Inhale. And exhale. Unravel that. Bring your hands behind you, back of the hands to the mat, so the palms are facing the sky. Same thing. Inhale, lift the shoulders, lift the head. Keep the chin away from the throat, but rather than looking upward, keep the crown reaching forward as you lengthen your neck. Then exhale, lower the chest, the chin, the forehead. Once again, think about lifting, lengthening away from the pelvis as you lift up. This time, lift the legs up, bend at your knees. Maybe you can reach back for down your asana, holding your ankles. Give it one more inhale. Use the next exhale to push the feet against the hand, lift the chest. Nice. Continue to breathe. And then release it all. Turn one cheek to the mat. <clears throat> Take a moment. Shoulders heavy. Chest, pelvis, and the legs heavy. All right. So if it wasn't quite obvious, we've been doing a lot with our upper back and shoulders today. So this is a, a stretch here for your shoulders. <clears throat> Go ahead and extend your left arm forward, then roll to your left side waist. And just balance on your left side. Reach your right arm up in the air and then turn the thumb down and then bring your arm behind the back. Much like Gomukhasana, you'll bring your arm behind you. I have limited range because of my injury, but some of you might be able to take the hand or the fingertips up towards your shoulder blades or even towards your neck. Keep the arm the same. Place your right foot down and then roll onto your back. Set. Left arm is doing nothing. Just stay where it is. It's alongside your ear. You can start to even bend both knees here. If you want a bit more, drop your knees over. If you'd like to feel a little bit more than that, then go ahead and cross your left leg over your right, and then gently drop both knees back over towards the right. Once you're here, you'll start to feel a lot of sensation right in through the front of that right shoulder. If you want a little bit more, you know you can always walk the back of that right hand a little closer towards your shoulder blades or the very nape of your neck. Go ahead now and simply unravel, extending your left leg forward and your right leg out. And as you lean to your left side, now go ahead and release that right arm, maybe give it a little shake. And then we'll make our way onto our right side waist, extending your right arm forward, rest onto the arm as you rest onto your whole right side waist. Go ahead and reach that left arm up in the air, turn the thumb down, and bring your arm right behind the back. Go ahead and walk the fingertips up so the back of the hand is resting at your spine, fingertips facing your shoulder blades or all the way towards the very nape of the neck. As you bend your left knee and set the foot flat, we'll roll to our backs once again. Both knees can bend. So again, you can find a little bit more intensity by dropping your knees to the left or cross your right leg over your left leg as you drop your knees to the left. As you'll notice here in the video, it's much different than what you're hearing right now because I lost some audio. So simply just kind of follow along with my cues, even if it doesn't look like it's matching exactly what you're seeing on screen. I'm take one more deep breath here, then let's release. Just simply extend the legs out and release that left arm out and give it a little shake as we now stay on our backs to prepare for bridge pose. So both knees bent. Ankles underneath the knees, setting the feet at sit bones distance where you can reach forward with your fingertips to feel the heels line up with your sit bones. Then to prepare, let's press down against the feet, slowly peeling our hips off the mat. Once you're up towards your upper back, start to work your upper arms underneath your chest, interlace your fingers and extend the arms straight. From here, gently press the back of the head against the mat so your chin is away from the third center, keeping the neck nice and long. Feel free to hold your bridge pose as long as you'd like. Again, you'll notice in the video, it's a little different from what I'm saying to you at this moment. All 
All right, and then slowly lower. So go ahead and add one more bridge pose if you'd like, exact same thing. Those of you who practice Ordva Dhanurasana, upward facing bow, the full um, wheel posture, you can go ahead and do so. Obviously, I'm not going to. I'm gonna honor my body today. But find a, a back bend shape of your choice. Some of you actually like camel pose. Or you can go back on the belly and practice your uh, Dhanurasana floor bow pose once again. And wherever you are, especially those of you moving into bridge or even um, Urdhva Dhanurasana, know your feet, they have that tendency to kind of turn outward. So see so you can keep the feet so they're parallel to each other a bit more. And then really think of the action of how you're grounded. Um, press your feet firmly down against the mat. Now try to slide them forward, right? See if it actually brings a little bit more engagement into your, your hamstrings. And you want to some... Uh, engagement through your glutes as well so you open up the front of your hips right again those are cues that work for your bridge they work for your back bend another breath here and then let's release that hug your knees into your chest just gently just mindful of what's going on in your low back maybe circle out the knees nice and then add a twist of your choice so if you want to cross at the legs if you want to keep them stacked, feel free, but then drop your legs to the right <clears throat> and bring them center and then drop the knees left and then bring them center. Let's come into a happy baby pose. Just reach for your outer ankles, the pinky sides of your feet if you'd like as you pull your thigh bones down, creating just a bit of a cobra into your chest. And then hug your knees in towards your chest, squeeze the thighs in close. Go ahead and rock yourself up and then face forward at the very top of your mat. I'm gonna face you in this direction so you can see me. And then bring both legs forward out in front of you. <clears throat> Once you're here, reach around and just so you can get some skin away so you're firmly rooted against your sit bones. And then bend at both knees. Reach for maybe your ankles or even the pinky sides of your feet, keeping the knees bent so you can feel the chest press up against your thigh bones. Now for a lot of us, this might be really good and effective because once you breathe a little bit deeper, you'll really feel the breath really expand into the back body. All right, so even if you know you can straighten the leg, just take a few moments here, just breathing into the back body. Again, another way just to counter out that um, movement we created in the spine and that in our back bending. And then those of you who want to go a little bit further in your stretch, you can slide the heels forward. See if you can keep that chest connected to your thighs. Some of us might start to come off, and that's perfectly fine, but keep that length, right? And if you're moving deeper and holding in, again, regardless of you are, don't make it a journey or a certain destination. Just completely listen to where your body is right now. All right, inhale, look to the toes. Exhale, come out of your pose. All right, before we completely close, let's move through just a very brief pranayama exercise. So come into a seated position. <clears throat> this one I'm not going to mirror. So with your right hand, you're using just your right thumb. All right, so just take a moment here. You listen to my cues, but sit nice and tall and close your eyes. Let's take a deep inhalation through the nose. And a slow exhale out through the nose. Using your thumb, place your thumb against the right nostril. Inhale only through the left. Release your thumb. Exhale out of both nostrils. Close the right inhale. Release, exhale. Close the right inhale. Release, exhale. Continue on your own, just a couple more rounds. Beginning to find more control of our breath in a steady way, preparing ourselves for our final posture of rest. Let 
this next round be the last. And keep the eyes closed. We'll take a deep inhale through the nose. Part the lips. Exhale out. Now you can remain seated to close your practice this way. Otherwise, if you'd like, you can go ahead and come down onto your backs and take rest in Shavasana. Just letting your legs reach forward, taking the feet wide, arms alongside your body, palms to the sky. And if you've chosen to remain seated, stay soft within the face. Keep your spine long, collarbones wide. And just pause as you make that deep connection within. Whether you're seated or on your back, continue to keep your eyes closed, but let your next breath in feel deeper and fuller. Let your next breath out, really empty out. And continue this deep movement of your breath. If you're on your back, you can start to create some movement in your body, fingers, to the toes, maybe eventually stretching. You can hug your knees to your chest, roll to one side, and then meet the rest of us in a seated position. And once you're seated, just pause. And just simply observe the, the prana we've created. Again, so dynamic, so powerful. I'm in my space, you're in your space, but together we're able to connect so deeply in positive ways to help us during times that are so unprecedented and so bizarre, but you know, we have each other. So let's be grateful for that and our time on our mat as we now close our hands together in prayer. Let's close this practice with the sound of all. Take a deep breath in. Bring your thumbs toward your third eye center as you bow together to seal our practice inward. Namaste.